with us now to talk allergies. Not your car, is it, Alex? No, it's not. Go Good. for it. Take it. <laughs> talk allergies is Vet Care's Alex Melrose. Thank you so much for joining us. That's cool. Now, I want to know, uh, because we usually talk about ourselves having allergies about yeah, animals. Yeah. What's the other way around? How do you know if your animal's got an allergy? Well, the biggest difference is that with us, we often think of hay fever signs, right? So a lot of sinus and weepy eyes and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. But with pets, sneezing. it's usually... Yeah, sneezing, yeah. Pets, it's usually skin. Okay, so it's usually a lot of itchiness, um, self-mutilation, hair loss, um, infect skin infections and things like that. When you say self-mutilation, like they're mm. nibbling it or they're yeah. scratching at their skin. Yeah. So what are the most common causes for allergies in pets? Well, uh, we've got inhaled allergies, so pollens, um, sometimes perfumes and cigarette smoke. Um, we've got uh, parasites like fleas. On the, on the surface of the skin, um, and food as well. Those are the, probably the three biggest ones. And so how do you figure out what they're actually allergic to? Yeah, it's like a little bit of a detective sort of uh, scenario where it's quite hard to prove an allergy um, with a simple blood test or something like that. You need to take skin biopsies and other things like that. So what we'll try to do is eliminate a whole lot of other causes first. And see what that happens then. See what we're left with. So you know. what about the food allergies? How common is that? Yeah, it's pretty common. Um, <clears throat> often it'll be to something very simple like a particular protein source like beef or something like that. That's very common in almost every pet food. Um, so what we do in that situation is we'll try and set up a dietary trial where for a six to eight week period we put them on a very special protein source. So it might okay. be white fish and tapioca mm. made into a commercial diet. Well, it could be all right. Well, I'm right. supposed to not a dog, so white we'll fish. see. Yeah. That doesn't sound too bad. And this Maybe salmon for you. Is that, That'd be nice. Yeah. And so then you see how it works out. Yeah, you, you, you'd be very, very strict for a six to eight week period. You look for improvements in the skin and then that gives you a guide as to whether you're on the right track. But or would that also be skin? Would that also be their bowel functions too, wouldn't it, food, I would think? Yeah, sometimes, although not as much as, you, you know, not as, much yeah? as you'd think. Yeah, they have to, often pets have to eat something pretty disastrous to have bowel problems, yeah. So can the allergies come and go in pets like they can with humans? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, t generally, once they've got it, they'll have it for life. Occasionally, things will disappear. Um, what we do see is we often see a seasonal pattern. So, for example, if it's pollens particularly, it's going to be an issue now. Um, yeah. And it's going to quieten down in the winter, but as we hit spring, it's going to flare up again. So, you know, you'll see patterns like that, and that'll help with your detective process. Okay, yeah. so you're detective, and go and see the vet and see if Pet you can detective. find out what's going on with your animal. Thank you so much for joining okay. us today and for those allergy tips, Alex. And we have a $50 Pet of the Week voucher available too. Congratulations to Vinny from Walkwith. Look at that. Wow. That is gorgeous. Vinny is a Maine Coon cat. They're, oh, they're gorgeous Massive. cats. Yeah, Massive. huge too, aren't yeah. they? Uh, and you are our winner this week. Jump onto Facebook and post your favourite pet pic to be into win too.